So we're having railway conversations today with Doc Frank. Hi, this is Doc Frank, host of the podcast Railway Conversations with Doc Frank. Thank you for listening. My conversation today is with Paul Roach, a business consultant and coach from Perth in Australia, the same city where I live as well. In this podcast, we basically turned roads. So the interviewer is actually not me, it's Paul. And this interview that you are about to see or hear, depending on what platform you're on, was done in the Business Spotlight podcast, which is the podcast hosted by Paul and some of his colleagues. Now, Paul is not a railway person, so therefore this interview is not strictly about railway stuff. But I hope that there are still some interesting bits and pieces for you in there, including, for example, the setup of a small business in the railway industry, the dealing of small businesses with economic crises, the power of decision making, the importance of taking action, benefits of a morning routine, and the merits of global networking. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Doc Frank here. Real quick, I want to let you know about one of the best CBTC trainings in the world, if not the very best, but you always need to be careful with superlatives. It's the CBTC Kickstarter online course. It consists of 30 video lessons, that's the three with the zero, in total over 11 hours of training content, talking about everything from the basics of CBTC, current standards, the benefits of CBTC, the key functionality of it, the supply industry, application tips and tricks, lessons learned, do's and don'ts, case studies, arguably the most comprehensive training that you can find anywhere on the topic of CBTC. A few additional things that make learning easier for you that you may not find on any other online courses, one of them being an immersion plan that helps guiding you through the training course and progress it in a finite period of time instead of just having it sit there for months and months on end. There is access to an online study group where you can connect with other students who are doing that training course at the time and form learning groups. There will be live coaching calls once every two weeks. And after the training, you will not be on your own. There is an alumni community that allows you to ask questions about the course content on an ongoing basis. So it's basically education for life. You can inform yourself about this training course and register to it on my training portal, which is docfranktraining.podia.com slash CBTC Kickstarter dash online 2023. I repeat that docfranktraining.podia.com slash CBTC Kickstarter dash online 2023. I look forward to seeing you at that training. And until then, please enjoy my upcoming episode of this podcast. <laughs> So we're having railway conversations today with Doc Frank. So Doc Frank, how are you? I'm very well, Paul. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. Great to see you. Um, so firstly, what is your business and what do you do? I am an independent consultant and trainer for a particular niche in the railway industry, which is signaling, especially modern signaling, contemporary advanced signaling technologies. And I have, um, yeah, quite a strong position in the in the marketplace. I'm quite well known, and uh, yeah, it's 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 going okay. I can't complain. I complain. Good, good. And are you um, based across Australia or across the world, or how far is your reach? I used to be pretty much everywhere in Australia. I worked in the last few years, that is before COVID. I mean, after COVID, every, everything fell pretty much in a heap as for everyone. 
Yep. Uh, before that, I did work in, in Perth here where I live in Melbourne, in Sydney and in Brisbane. So I was active in all four major Australian cities. I did some work in Wellington and New Zealand as well. So a little bit of overseas work, if you will. Yep. And um, yeah, and my training courses are, well, started off in Australia, but ever since I took them, uh, what I call live online via video conferencing, I started having students from Europe as well, from other countries between Australia and Europe. And I'm currently working on uh, a more global reach to get rid of these time zone differences with online courses, but we will probably come to that later on. Yeah, absolutely. And you you mentioned COVID, and it was a, has been or still continues to be a pretty horrific time for a lot of business owners and a lot of people around the world. In the moving into the post-COVID era, what are the some of the things that um, have changed for you since since COVID kicked in? Um, I think the main thing. For me, after COVID, if I consider this time now after COVID, which is not quite correct because it, it keeps flaring up once in a while, but uh, things have changed considerably with regards to sitting in an office versus uh, doing work from home. So these days I work exclusively from home. I don't have any ongoing office arrangements where I go into a client's office as I used to do in previous years. That's not happening anymore. Uh, I haven't been on a business trip for two and a half years, more than two and a half years. And um, yeah, everything is basically run from home. The training courses that used to be classroom trainings in, in cities like Sydney and Melbourne, they are now exclusively live online and in future even online, purely online courses where I'm sitting in front of a camera rather than standing in a classroom after a five-hour flight from the West Coast to the East Coast. And um, the, the main thing for me really was mentally, I had to shake this whole thing off, this whole COVID and all the other craziness that went along with it, um, that put me in a little bit of a hole and um, getting out of there mentally and basically starting to play offense again. That was, to me, the biggest change that has led me out of this COVID era, if you if you will. Because it's been a, for a lot of business, it's been a start again and then stop again, start again, stop again. Have you found that as well with COVID as it's flared up? No, it, it just, uh, it just collapsed and it's still about to slowly build up again. Um, I had a few very good years preceding COVID and, uh, and then during COVID or, or at the beginning of COVID, coincidentally, there were a few of my contracts that came to an end and were not extended because of uh, of COVID and my inability to travel to the East Coast on a regular basis. I was flying over there quite frequently, and that that stopped immediately. Same with training courses on the East Coast that also went down to zero. So the, the drop in business volume was enormous. Um, so when I think when we when we talked about um, JobKeeper and the requirements for being eligible for that, and they said something like if the business dropped by thirty percent or more, I was just laughing at that. I, I had probably three times that. And yeah, wow. um, okay. so if if it if I if I had a, a bigger business with employees that are uh, reliant on regular income, I probably would have had to close shop. It's really just that I basically could live off reserves from previous years and um, and make do with uh, less than before that made the whole thing survive. That's that's probably the big advantage if you are working on your own and, and you've had a few good years and then you can afford a few years that are not quite as good. It's certainly, certainly been horrific for a lot of businesses, hasn't it? absolutely stop them in their tracks. I don't know how many business owners I've sat in front of that have been in tears going, I can't even give my business away. It's, mm -hmm. it's stopped. So what's the, what's the biggest learning for you since you've been in business? Has it been, been the COVID era or is, it, is there something else that's uh, been a big I, Yeah, I think, I, I think the, the last year was really the most notable one in terms of learning that 
I can basically turn myself around at the drop of a hat if I only make the decision to do so. Yeah, the, um, the, the way that I fell into that slump during the two COVID years or maybe two and a half even. So twin, from, say, mid-2020 to mid-2022. So, yeah, just, just a little bit more than two years, which in hindsight look almost wasted. I mean, I still did stuff. I still had a remote consulting gig that I'm still having. Uh, I still did training courses every once in a while, just with fewer participants. So, so from the outside, it looked like I was still active, but um, it it wasn't in inside me mentally. It wasn't the same anymore. Um, maybe because of of lots of outside circumstances, lots of inputs that didn't really help me. Uh, too much mainstream media and and stuff like that. And there were a lot of things happening that I wouldn't want to go into too much detail, which really pulled me down. And yep. um, drawing a line for myself and saying, okay, enough is enough. I'm, I'm not going straight from a, a COVID crisis into a recession crisis, um, on the way having an inflation crisis. It, that's enough crisis for now. So um, some, of the, some of the thought leaders I'm following out there were basically saying there are two kinds of people in the coming two years, those who sit on their bums and will drown and those who do something and will thrive. And I looked at myself and said, okay, well, there's only one category I want to go with and that's the thriving one and that's where I'm going. And everything else is just off. Yeah. So I cut myself completely off from all this news crap that I looked at during the uh, two years prior. Um, I improved my input significantly. I started a new morning routine, all kinds of things. And um, motivation, enthusiasm, uh, fun of work, everything went through the roof over the last four months or so. And uh, I'm, I'm fully determined to make 2023 the best year so far in my career, hopefully in my business as well. Whether the numbers reflect this, I can't tell, but I'm definitely trying. And um, it was certainly a learning experience how to get myself out of this whole last year. Um, and hopefully I, I never get back again into something like this. But if I did, I would now have some kind of a blueprint to get myself out of there, which I think was quite uh, instructive and quite helpful. So what a great attitude, firstly. But going back to when you said you made the decision to move yourself out of the, the quagmire of COVID, what are the things that helped you make that decision? What are the things you used as tools to 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 find your way out? Um, it's a multi-step process, which I actually wrote an article about on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. People will probably find this if they just look under my name, and it's an article where I have a shovel in my hand because that was about uh, like a symbol for digging myself out of a hole. Yep. Uh, first step was really to be clear about my why, about the driver, why I want to do this. Um, and it's not just like oh, I want to be less depressed or something like this. This is not what what gets you out of there. Um, so in my case, it was really uh, a thing of um, providing for my family. That's that's extremely important to me. Um, that's where I continue legacy from previous generations of my family. And I found for me that this was really the strongest driver to say, okay, enough is enough. Uh, I've had enough of a slump over the last uh, two years before that. And from now onwards, it's about time that I get back into gear and at least try to get back to where I was um, in the years before COVID. I had a fantastic year in 2019. And, uh, and then in early 2020, it started well in the first two months or so. But after that, yeah, well, we spoke about that. Um, the next step was then to get some kind of external help. I, In hindsight, I ended up doing in the last few months what I should have done right at the beginning of COVID. I mean, it wasn't rocket science to say for somebody providing training, if you can't do classroom trainings anymore, then one way is to go on Zoom, which I've done. And another way is to go completely online, which means starting video recording and, and stuff like that. And I just couldn't get myself there for the 
strangest of excuses, like I'm not good on camera, I'm not good in public speaking, which is complete nonsense. I mean, I've, I've proven the opposite over years and years and years. I've spoken at so many conferences. It's not funny. And so, so I know how to do this. And I'm certainly not shy in front of a camera, as you can probably tell. Um, but with, with all those negative impacts coming during those COVID years, uh, I just couldn't get myself to it. And, and one big obstacle for me was really to not having a proper training platform. I didn't really have the idea, okay, I record the videos, but what then? And, and this has changed tremendously. So I did uh, a training back in August last year, which was exactly about that, exactly about how to build an online course. And, uh, and here is a platform that you can use to upload everything and basically have your own training portal, including a website. So I did this. I did a nose dive into that um, new portal within three or four days, I found out that it wasn't powerful enough for what I had in mind. Like, for example, I could only have three courses. I was planning to do six within the next six months. So that it was already visible that this platform wouldn't be um, capable enough for me. And uh, yeah, and just like that, within 24 hours, I found myself another platform. I did a free test. Within 48 hours, I was clear this is the tool I, was, I want to work with. So I subscribed to one of those professional plans and three days later I had my website up. And, and that was a process that previously took me years just, just contemplating. Yeah, with issues like my previous website was built by a, by a third party provider and then those guys went broke. So there wasn't anybody there to help me maintaining it or fixing anything or so. So my, my experience with building websites was terrible. And uh, and with this new platform, I could just build it, yeah, just like that. Yeah, even even I could do it. And uh, in no time, I had a training platform with my first course offers out there, and um, and and started getting money, connections to bank accounts, e-commerce, everything worked just like that. So it was a real game changer. Inspiration. And, um, Sorry that you've 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 done this whole pivot because you made a decision that that's what you're going to do. You're going to find a way to support your family. So then you've moved from the face-to-face -to, -face to the online, to the revised online model. Yeah. So it's up and running. And yes. it's all, all moved forward since then for you. you. You know, the, the moment you make the decision, and it, it's, it is really as simple as that. It sounds so incredible. And, and some people may say at home, ha, ha, I wish it was that easy. But it, it really is. It really is. I mean, if, if you ju just just look out of the window, you can decide you look at the tree or you can decide you look at the uh, at the car. Yeah, for example, if there is a tree in the car. So it's your choice where you're looking at. And you may realize that the car is rusty and needs repair and a new one and it's all these worries coming up. Or you can look off a tree and, and you realize it's flowering. It looks beautiful. It, yeah. So it's really a matter of perspective. And it's a matter of deciding which direction you want to look at. Yeah. So, for example, start of my new morning routine, I started off with reading a book, and then I just made the decision to implement what was recommended in the book. Yeah. The book, in case you may ask, was the 5 a.m. club from Robin Sharma. Oh, yes. So I, I started getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. How do you do that? You make the decision to put your alarm at 5 o'clock in the morning, and when the alarm goes off, you make the decision that you don't hit the snooze button, but you get your backside out of bed. And then you are upright. And then the next step is that you start moving, do some exercises, take a cold shower, whatever. And it works. And I've, I'm, I think now I'm at day 114 of that morning routine without a single fail of getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning or these days even a little bit earlier. I set my own time, which is 4.44. Because I just found it funny, but um, and it, it's a decision. It's my decision every morning whether I want to stay in bed or whether I want to get up and get on with my day. And it's a huge difference because if you win that first battle of the day, if you will, and then you win the next one that like you're doing some kind of exercise, even if you don't feel like it. And then you win the next battle that you go onto the, under the shower and you have some cold water on your body, even though the body is streaming, I um, would much rather have warm water. 
Um, so within the first 20 minutes of the day, you start off with three victories and then you make your bet, which is one of these uh, hacks for, yeah, like starting your day with some achievement, uh, which looks minor. But if, if you basically in the first hour of your day, you have already four or five wins in the bag where your, your willpower and your discipline persevered over uh, the excuses and, ah, oh, but not today, and I went to bed last night, and the, the kids were screaming, and the dog was barking, and I didn't really sleep properly, and so on. So you, you can always, you can find excuses, or you can find a way forward. And, and that's really a decision. And if you are tired, then you're tired. I mean, there are days when I just have a nap at lunchtime. That's the benefit of having my own business and being not dependent on what external bosses tell me. Um, if I'm really too tired to function properly, then I may have a nap for half an hour during the day, and then I'm fine throughout the afternoon. And if I'm tired in the evening, I just go to bed a little bit earlier, and that should make it easier to get myself up again the next morning at 5 o'clock. So it, it, really, it really is a decision. It's also a decision for what kind of information I get myself in. I mean, it's, it's so easy on, on uh, social media or on the on the internet to just click on the news pages and hear all the latest and greatest about the war in Ukraine and uh, the newest inflation rates and what it does to homeowners and all these other things that does do nothing but really pulling you down mentally. Or you can decide that it doesn't really interest you. Yeah. And I mean I, I don't want to sound heartless, but Australia is quite a bit away from the Ukraine. Yes, so no even though it's hard what's happening to the people there, there's absolutely nothing I can do about that changes things if I listen to the news every day and realize that, uh, ah, well, it's still going on and I wonder what happens next. And, and then you start all this worrying that doesn't change a thing for the actual events that are happening in the world and all it does for my own life to change it for the worse. Well, Put stress in there. So fantastic to hear your story. And that, that's, you're yeah, absolutely right. Once you make a decision, you follow it through, and that's the willpower and the discipline. It's, it's the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And I'm pleased that you've taken the pain of discipline because it's, uh, it's the one that takes you forward the, the fastest. So well done. Congratulations on that. And is that is that your inspiration at the moment to keep following that 5 a.m. plan? And that's what's keeping you moving forward, or is there some other inspiration? Ah, uh, well, you you know, it, things things just evolve from there. Um, I mean, I'm I have done over the last few months. I've done a few training events that were happening virtually in America. And if you look at the time zone differences, it normally means if they start something at uh, I don't know at, at, at ten o'clock in the morning, that's like. I think 11 o'clock at night or something like that on, on our end. And, and uh, so, so I've, I've been up at 2 a.m. in the morning for some training quite often over the last few months. But, I mean, if you're used to get up at 5, getting up at 2 is actually not that much harder if you think about it. Yeah, and, and there's uh, often enough I, I get up by myself very early in the morning at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and if I can't sleep anymore, I just... I just go to work, yeah. So, which means basically, I just need to get out of bed and get to my desk, and then I can start doing things that bringing me forward, getting my life forward. And um, yeah, so, and as a consequence, I'm doing a lot of new things at the moment. So that that nice fancy background that I've got here, not just that it's my favorite corporate color, that orange, but there's also the logo of uh, a podcast that I'm starting myself in just nine days from now. On Australia Day, I'm kicking off my own podcast, which is uh, about conversations like we have now in, yep. the, in the railway industry with a few interesting people, which I hope are of interest to um, a wide variety of listeners as well. So it's a pretty international um list of guests that I've got. My first four episodes will be with people from four different countries all, all over the world. And um, yeah, and, and this is just something that I'm doing on the side. I'm delivering new training courses, um, developing new training courses, delivering existing ones. I update them all the time. So I'm, I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly doing something. 
And I've got a few other things in the back for later this year, which I'm not disclosing too early to keep the, uh, the tension up a bit. Yeah. I'm, but it, I'm, it's, I'm really looking forward to your podcast. Really looking forward to having a listen to that when it, when it comes out in nine days' time. Australia mm. Day. Yes, I'll, I'll mark it in the calendar and uh, yeah, look, look forward to listening to it because it's uh, exciting stuff because it sounds like something to me that wouldn't, wouldn't naturally fit into an easy podcast. So it's going to attract a fairly diverse community of listeners, I think. And the yeah. fact that that's attracting uh, uh, people from around the world, I think, is going to be, make it really exciting. Yes, um, the, that, that was another thing that I was really, I was really missing. It was like a wasted opportunity during, uh, during COVID. I, I did know how to use Zoom. I, I'm a, I'm a frequent Zoom user. I'm subscribed to that service so that my meetings don't stop after 45 minutes. Probably the same as you, uh, which, which happens when you have the free package. So I've got one of these of the paid plans that I can use Zoom as often as I like for my training courses and as long as I like. Um, I could have used Zoom a lot more for just meetings with people or catching up with friends or catching up with peers in my industry overseas. These days I'm doing all that. Yeah, So I'm not just doing the podcast interviews, the connections that I'm reestablishing with, with people that I like, that also like me, it's it's like building a network of friends around the world. Yeah, just that you're not uh, you're not constrained to your local pub. You can talk to a person in Canada, and two hours later you talk to a person in England, and uh, three hours later you talk to someone in New Zealand. Yeah, Amazing and technology. and for tomorrow you've got somebody from Denmark on the line, and then there's somebody from from Italy, and it, it's amazing. With, with all Zoom, and they can all talk together. Yeah, I mean, with, with Zoom, you're basically connected with the world and um, and catching up with good friends after such a long time. I, I, I basically, I, I ended the call and I thought, I've been an idiot that I haven't done that for the two years prior because that would have taken me out of my hole a lot earlier. Yeah, just having these human connections, not just sitting at home uh, in your in your own little bubble with your wife and your dogs, that would have been a game changer. Yeah, but uh, yeah, sometimes you just have the blinkers on and it uh, takes a while until they fall off. Yes, but things happen at the right time for us, don't they? That's when we're ready. Hopefully. I mean, I could, I could, um, I could winch about the two years that I, I lost in inverted commas over the last two years, but it doesn't help me. It doesn't help me going forward. It doesn't help me that the next year is getting any better. So the best thing is just drawing a line, learning my lesson, and making sure that that doesn't happen again. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Doc Frank, thank you so much for your time and appreciate your, your view of the world. It's uh, purely inspirational for anyone that's listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, and all the best for your podcast. Hi, it's Doc Frank again, real quick before you head off. If you are a fan of communications-based train control or short CBTC, there's an event coming up in September that you absolutely don't want to miss. It's the first virtual global CBTC conference. It's called CBTC World Summit 2023, and it's happening on the 20th and the 21st of September. There will be three sessions of about six hours duration each for three different global regions, one for Asia Pacific, one for North and South America, and one for Europe and the Middle East. So wherever you are in the world, one of those sessions will be during the daytime in your time zone and you can watch it live for the full six hours with six presentations. The kicker about this is that all other presentations, including the ones from your own session, will be available for replay via recordings. So that means that if the other session should be in the middle of your night, you can still watch it on demand at a time that's more convenient for you and doesn't interfere with your good night's sleep. The conference is available for registration right now at my training portal. 
under docfranktraining.podia.com slash summit23. I repeat that, docfranktraining.podia.com slash summit23. I'm putting a lot of effort into this conference. It will be an absolute blockbuster event and I very much hope to see you there. Until then, keep it simple and bye for now. Hey, Doc Frank here, host of the Railway Conversations podcast. Thank you for listening.